Well, welcome back to Love with a Classic, and today's going to be a fun video. We have this 4.2 XK engine here that we're going to tear down. It is the engine from my old daily driver, which we've had to head off it twice. I bought that car with a blown head gasket or it overheated. Um, had the head off, uh, tested, skimmed, put on gasket blue again. I thought, okay, must have done something wrong. So I thought, you know, for just a week of work and about 100 bucks in parts. Uh, took it off, chested it, put it back on. Still leaked. We put a camera down in, I believe, cylinder 2. And we can see a lot of droplets coming in. We did a couple experiments and we tried, just for fun, because I knew the engine was bad. So we tried two different head gaskets in a can. We tried the wrist loan one and we tried the case seal one. Neither of them worked which is building a lot of pressure in the coolant system and uh, losing coolant. So, replace the engine and it's been sitting for about two years now. But let's take it apart because I want to get it out of the workshop and it takes less space where I can actually you know, move it easier when it's apart. Plus, technically the head should be good. This is a Series 3 engine, so it's the um, big valve head and all of that. So, it should be a good engine. And let's also see how rebuildable it is if the block can maybe get new liners or something like that and i want to see what does the inside look like after using you know like a sealer it's like a head gasket sealer can we see like are any of the ports around the head gasket are they blocked are the coolant passages and also have a look at the bearings have they you know has anything happened because some of those head gasket materials is they're a bit like coarse and then if you have coolant with that in circulating through the oil what do the bearings look like so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna take this thing apart and have a look so let me give you guys a quick walk around of the engine there's some things you can see on this side in the exhaust ports and then it is cam covers off loose and timing chain get the head off. Hopefully it shouldn't be on it too bad, but I have a couple tricks I can show you how to get these off. And then uh, flip it around, sump, and start knocking pistons out of it. So uh, yeah, let me give you a walk around and then we're gonna drain the oil as well because it's leaking all over my floor. A couple of things are missing from it. Like we have the oil filter housing and the feed pipes up the camshafts. There are, they're on my replacement engine in my car. And that's why we have a leak from here because this is just sat in there loosely. Distributor, of course, is out of it. Power steering, alternator, all of that. The cover plate here in the back is out, but we can get the first sort of look at stuff in the coolant system. The real interesting thing will be to have a look behind the freeze plugs, the core plugs, because I replaced those um, when I had the head off the first time. So I cleaned out in there, cleaned out the thread. So it was completely clean in here. So if that's all sludged up, that is, um, well, that'll be interesting to see. One thing is, I believe it was cylinder two that we had the bad leak on, but I removed the manifolds to put on, on my driver because these were actually really good manifolds. And we have that white, almost looks like a bit of mold. It's only in that one, well, a little bit, right? That's really only in that one. So that's interesting to see if it is cylinder one, which was leaking worse or, yeah, I don't really know. There's still plenty of oil in it. It's very, very clean. So uh, yeah, I'll get a drain pan out, start draining the oil and then take the cam covers off, loosen the timing chain. I think it might actually already still be pretty loose and then just acorn nuts off and lift the head off. Let's start by seeing if we see any coolant in the bottom of this thing. I have drained a little bit of the oil, but I drained it um, vacuum sucking from the top when I removed the oil filter head on me. But let's see if we get any water out of this thing. Yeah, there was a little bit right at the bottom. Right there. Not very much at all, but we're gonna call that a teaspoon. But there was definitely something. We'll let that drain, and then while we're draining, we'll start taking the cam covers off. Just gonna put 
everything in here. Most of the hardware is pretty much new. But I don't have a like, big use for it right now. These cam covers are unfortunately cracked. I didn't know that when I painted them and sanded the ribs and all of that on them. But they are cracked, both of them. And you can't actually really see it until the engine's running and they leak oil. So since they are in you know, cosmetically really nice shape and they're completely worthless, I'm going to hang them on a wall as decoration because I think they look nice. So. That is why, uh, if someone's wondering why they're not on my new engine, that is why. And also my new engine, oh, that just flew off. My new engine has, it's a Series 1 head, so it has different, different uh, cam covers. So, get this off. This one's already loose. And, because I think I used those, eight, yeah, I used those acorn nuts for another project. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys the cool the oil a little bit because now yeah we can actually see that yes there is water in it. It's weird. You couldn't it's, it's like it wasn't sitting at the bottom, which it should be. Weird, but yeah, it's sort of foamy at the moment, so I'll show you guys that in a bit. Just need to get a torx to get that one off, and then a little rubber mallet, and these will come off, and then I'm not sure. I might have loosened the timing chain already. We'll have to have a look at that. Smaller rubber mallet. So the trick to get these off without cracking them, but these are already cracked, so. But they will look really nice on my wall. There we go. I used. Oh yeah, I remember <laughs> I was rushing to put this thing together and I didn't have any cam cover gas because I forgot to order them. That's why. It didn't leak though. It was just a lot of RTV. But that will go nicely on the wall. So put that one to the side. Here and we'll get this one off. There we go. Clean those up, put them on the wall. But I'll bring you guys in for a closer look at the timing chain and all of that. We'll loosen it, then remove the sprockets, and then we can just start getting the acorn nuts off. You see that filming there? That does a lot not look normal. And can you see sort of the sheen right there? Right there. Let's cool it. So yeah, I'm glad I'm not running this engine anymore. And you can see it up here as well. See that little line right there? That is coolant. And anything on this side? Oh, pretty good on this side. So we've gone through this before. This is the timing chain tensioner on an XK engine for the upper timing chain. That plunger gets pushed in by the tool and then you move it back and forth. This one's sort of knackered. But that just moves that sprocket in there on an eccentric cam. And then when you move it to one side, you tighten up the chains. So we'll loosen those up and loosen that. You got to be really careful not to drop anything down in here. I actually did drop something down in this engine. I'm really looking forward to seeing where it is. Um, one of the little spring washers there, I dropped all the way down. And yeah, I sort of figured, let's run with it, see what happens. It's been fine. It's probably sitting in a sludge somewhere in the bottom. You know, if it was someone else's engine, I would have taken it apart. But with it just being mine, I was okay with that. 
So we'll loosen that up with a special tool. Then we will have these loose. I'm not going to bother about setting it to top dead center and all of that if you really want to. You know, if you're going to put this thing back together, which I'm not, you would roll it over to top dead. And then you have these notches here on both camshaft, one there, one there. They need to be pointing straight up. And there is a tool, I'll bring it out and show you guys, that you set up here to set the uh, camshafts. But uh, let me get the tools and show you guys that. And then we'll loosen this off, get these off. You can get two of the bolts and then roll it over. On earlier engines, uh, these are held in with locking wire. Uh, on these later ones, it is spring washers. And also on early engines, you only have two of them. If you want to see the disassembly of an early engine, we are going to do that. I have a 3.8 XK. I'm going to rebuild at some point for my S-Type. I don't know when. But uh, stay subscribed and stay tuned. And we're going to rebuild that one at some time here. We're just taking it apart, not being as careful. I'm just uh, really, uh, I care about the head. Because uh, I know that's a good head. The rest of it, uh, not so much. Here we have the two specialist tools I talked about. This is for cam adjusting up the timing chain. There's lots in there. And this is for setting the camshafts. And it sits like said, up here. I'm not going to use this one because, well, also, I mean, I'm fully disassembling this thing, so it doesn't really matter. But if you're just taking the head off, you would roll this over top dead, line these up before we start uh, loosening. Or, not when you're losing them initially, you would line them up basically 180 degrees out from this, loosen two of them, and then line them up to this and loosen the other two. But let's see if we can loosen the tension on this. So you loosen that a little bit, and then this is spring loaded. And it is clockwise to loosen. Now, there we go. That is at its highest mark. And now we have a very loose chain. So let me get those two off. And then we'll roll the engine over, get the other two off. And then these can be just moved to the side with some zip ties. Got four bolts out, so two in each. We're going to roll it over. So we can get the other ones out. And there we have those two. And if we go a little bit further, we can we can get those as well. So they're fairly easy just to get out. You can use different things. I really, if you've watched the channel, you know, I love these sort of, I don't know what you're gonna call them, these angled things. I think they're they're just convenient. And you can get into tight spaces and get everything up. But yeah, you gotta be careful not to drop those little washers, which, uh, yeah. It's the first time I've ever dropped something in an engine when I did that the second time I stumbled this thing. But I, uh, I didn't have a choice because it was like the only car I had running at the moment and I spent the weekend pulling it apart. So, uh, yeah, I put it together and I thought it's so soft. Those things, if it's going to get caught somewhere, it's probably going to get chewed up. But it's going to be interesting to see where we find it. And then one more. And just emphasizing once again, if this was an engine I was really building, I would probably take a little bit more care. And also, it's I would have probably drained the oil out earlier if there's water in it. It's been sitting without plugs in it. I mean, yeah. Uh, I'm not saying I don't care about it, but I know that it needs a lot of work to be an engine. Let me get two zip ties. We'll zip these together and then pull them to the side. I was out of medium zip ties, so maybe this will be fine. Technically, I don't need to do this now because I don't really care if it jumps the tooth or not, but 
should keep them together still. And then you have this little holder here where you can slide it up there so it will slide past the head. Quite clever stuff. And to think all this was designed in the 40s. Used in the XJ saloons until, yeah, well into the mid 80s, 86, I believe 85, 86, and then still used in the limousines for a long time and used in tanks and other things. So, really a long design. We're going to take a little bit of a shortcut here and use an impact just to get these off. Um, yeah, spiral pattern. I'm not going to go the exact torque route because we're just taking it off. And also, I have a feeling that there are issues with this engine. We're going to save these acorn nuts because they're brand new. If you remember when I put this thing together, we also measured everything, measured the thread depth. That's why we have one place where I think we had two long studs. But right here, put double washers just to make sure that they did not bottom out. And I've looked inside every single one of these and I can still see threads in the bottom that are clean that haven't been used. So none of them have bottomed out. Camshaft still looks good. Uh, no real wear on that. Probably not going to take the camshafts out of the head. I might take one of the journals off just so we can have a look at the bearings. But it should hopefully be fine. I mean, it's a very clean engine inside, otherwise. There we go. Now, there are several ways to get the cylinder heads off. Because these are long, this is a long stud engine, 4.2. So, these go into coolant passages, the studs, all the way down into where the core plugs are. Uh, so, you can have coolant basically seeping up here and actually see some remnants of what looks like coolant mixed with, yeah, stop leak, up through here. So that will, of course, you know, make it stick. We'll also have dissimilar metals and you'll have the stud itself grow a little bit with rust and then they don't come off. This thing hasn't been, it's three years ago I put it together and it is well, like two and a half years ago, I put it together, and about two years ago, I took it out of the car. So it shouldn't really be stuck on it too bad. If it is, you can uh, put penetrating fluid down here for a bit. You can also make some small little cups to sit around here out of like bottle caps and have ATF and things pouring down there. I did that the first time I took this thing apart. And then you can use bottle jacks up here to get this off. I need to take off the nuts here on the side and then I think we're still going to use the bottle jacks just to save my back and start just lifting this head up a bit. So what you want to do is get some of these small bottle jacks. These are just, you know, really cheap China ones. Uh, these are rated for two tons. But the nice thing is they will fit here right underneath the cylinder head. The cylinder head is wider than the block and has all these flat surfaces. And if it's really stuck on there, you need four. I have so far only needed two. And that's why I only have two of these actually. If I ever need more, I'll buy more. But get that one in there and I'm just gonna get started. Let's 
is not closed. There we go. There we go. Just started. We'll put the other one on this side up here in the back. And it's just about being even and it doesn't really take much. If it is taking a lot, then, you know, wait, let, let it sit, let it pop off when it can. But, still, yeah, you see, they're, they're really cheap, these things, they're not the best, but it does the trick. You can already, you see two pumps? I can get a finger underneath the back here. Yes, this thing hasn't been together that long, but even if they have, you can get them off like this. We are gonna do this assembly of a V12 on here at some point. Um, but uh, when we do that, I do have a special puller for V12s heads. They're a little bit, as well, but look at that. We can see the gasket already. And slowly but surely coming apart. And it's all about staying even. And you see the cam shaft is just sort of sliding past there without any issues. Going really well. Just see the gasket there. Pretty good and even. And this, yes, this can be done in the car. If you're just doing a simple head gasket or maybe doing something to your cylinder head or something like that. Okay, this one is maxed out. Let's see if we can actually just lift it off. Almost. Oh, we're very close. Stuck a little bit here. Oh, there we go. Fall off. Hmm. I gotta bring you guys in for a closer look, but cylinder head is off. Honestly, I thought it'd be more blocked, like passages and things. Definitely have a blockage there and there. Um, this is definitely the stuff, which I think, look, it looks sort of like some fuzzy strands or something. So that's definitely it. It's definitely been traveling up here when the coolant system's been pressurized.
So it was, this is the cylinder that we saw in the head that looked like it had um, been clean. It definitely is the cleanest of the cylinders. But you think this doesn't have a lot of miles on it after putting the head on. It all looks sort of steam cleaned a bit. So. But I think these long strands and fibers and things, especially that one there, I think that is the stop leak. I can't see like a definitive that, oh wow, that's where it blew. I mean, okay, we had that there, but that was just stuck on here and moved over there when we lifted the head off. So probably wasn't a gasket failure on the head here. So that is the cylinder that was the cleanest. And that's the one I thought. It doesn't look steam cleaned up here. That is just for me taking the head off. So it doesn't seem like it's a crack in the head. Also had it pressure tested, but it doesn't seem like that because then it would be really clean. Around here. You can see the gasket has been sealing because you see there's space there, 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 there. So yes, we have a series three block, which we'll see in a little bit is really tight because you have the slots in here, but I don't think it's, that's not a head gasket failure. So it has to be, has to be a crack somewhere. If I remember correctly, I saw the water somewhere here, I think. But uh, let's take this gasket off. Easier said than done one handed. Ugh. I'll put the camera down, take the gasket off, and then we'll have a look underneath. Here are the slots. Like I said, and it later blocks. And yes, it is tight right there. But there's no evidence it was blowing there. It's even tighter there. No evidence it was blowing. No evidence it was blowing. Maybe. Maybe right there. But I honestly could be. Because we never decked the block or anything with the block is because that meant removing the whole engine. And yeah, we were just trying this for fun. And then I just picked a different engine. Definitely stop leak there in between. Yeah, so that could be a blowout right there. I'm not an engine disassembly expert. Maybe that is the blow. Yeah, I do somewhere have the old head gasket. I can compare that if I can find it. But everything else. It's looking a little discolored there. So let me know in the comments down below if you are an expert at taking apart damaged engine, if that is a blow or not. I would think it'd be more discolored if it was. But uh, yeah, we got that apart. Then I'm gonna remove all of the studs. That will be interesting later to look in there. And then we're gonna take the front cover off uh timing gear 
and sump and all that. Okay, a little bit of a second thought here. Yes, it has definitely been leaking there and there. And this has never, uh, this has never been decked because you can still see stampings and things on here. And it is lower there and lower there. So that is definitely the issue, which actually means that this block is savable because take off a little bit of material at the top here. We can actually have a good engine or, you know, we'll see in the next video how the crank and all of that is, but this is actually really good news. We're going to call it it for this video. I don't want to make this too long. So we'll do this in two parts. I'll do a couple of things off camera. I will take the studs off. I'll take the core plugs out. You guys can have a look at that later and we'll take the front balancer off. So next time we'll do the front cover, flip it over, uh, do the sump. All of that, take the pistons out and everything and disassemble the last bit. But I thought this would be, this was a good first go. Got the head off and let me know in the comments down below if you're really good at looking at head gaskets like that. I think, I mean, it's not, it's not a crystal clear blow, but it could be one right there. And if so, then this block is definitely savable because if the rest of it looks good, it could be skimmed up there and we could build this engine together because it's, it's a good engine otherwise. Um, so yeah, we'll have to have a look at that. Anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with friends. If you're not really subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really helps out a lot. Till next time, I'm Adam. This was Lumina Classic. I'll see you soon.